What's up, YouTube? For tonight's video, we have a full Steel-type moves Pokemon team. So on this team, I use only Steel-type moves to attack the opponent. So I picked out some random ones from that list and made some pretty fun teams up. Now, this battle, uh, the battles that I did with this team were actually fairly difficult because I kept getting walled all the time. And the same two fire Pokemon kept coming up all the time. It was Delphox and Embor. They came up in 75% of the battles that I did. I couldn't believe it. Like... People just kept bringing these Pokemon. It was so frustrating. Anyway, I got destroyed about a million times. So I got some, finally got some good battles. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy them. Now, there was uh, the battle, not this battle, but the one after went for 111 turns. It was crazy. Obviously, I had to do some speed up and edits there, but I hope you can stick around for that one. It was rather amusing. So we have a battle against uh, Skylar on my Discord. And uh, we got a Bastillon lead here. So Clefable. I had, to, I had to use Clefable because it's got Meteor Mash, right? I had to use it. I could not help myself using it. So we got Iron Tail, Meteor Mash, Substitute, and Workup. We got the ability as Magic Guard and the item as Salic Berry. Max Attack and the Max Speed. So after that Salic Berry does kick in, you actually can outspeed quite a few Pokemon. It's pretty funny. So really, this matchup is terrible for me because I'm not going to be able to do too much damage to Bastion. It's got very high defenses, and uh, obviously, you know, Clefable's not really cut out to be much of a physical attacker. And it's got a super effective Steel-type move, Ming Iron Head. So going to Bronzong, tanking that hit rather nicely. Oh, also, people, in the last video that I did with these full-only moves, there were a couple of confused people. Now, when I say Steel-type moves only, I mean Steel-type moves only to attack. So that doesn't mean I can't use other status moves to help me out, right? Obviously, these battles are extremely hard as it is, so I couldn't possibly just have steel type moves. Okay, uh, so we got the Togetic, and you guys actually get to see Heavy Slam used properly for the first time ever. <clears throat> and anyway, we got the Togetic uh, doing a Drain Punch to me. It's only doing a little bit of damage, but uh, the way I see it, Togekitty is probably the most useless Pokemon against me. So they're probably just sending out to see you know, what, what I was going to do with my Bronzong. And uh, it was expendable. It was probably the, the least helpful Pokemon on their team. Also, my opponent was actually running a theme team too. I wonder if you guys can actually guess what it is in the comment section. Okay, so we got a counter coming out right here, which is the Honish. Now, you might say, oh, it's only a little cup Pokemon. But it's actually very bulky of Everlight. And obviously, if I'm only using Steel Tuck, look how much it did. It did nothing. So it's like... Hmm, what, what am I going to do here? So it also had Shadow Sneak, which is super effective against my Bronzong. And uh, Bronzong actually just lives that one, so I'm able to get another Iron Head off. Now, I obviously, I did have some special attacking Steel-type moves. There wasn't a lot, but I did actually roll one of them on the random ones, thank goodness. So we got Hone Edge taking my Bronzong out. Really, there wasn't much I could do. I could have gone into Cafable, but then again, that could have Gyro and just, like, destroy me. So there was no point. Now, I was thinking, how am I going to get around this? My only Pokemon to really get around this is Jirachi. Now, this is a special Jirachi set. And uh, I wanted to use Doom Desire because it's actually a really interesting move. Obviously, you really never get to see it being used. So, Doom Desire, is, uh, it's got 140 base power and it's got 100% actually, which is really nice. And it's a special move too. Now, it's kind of like a time delay move, like, um, you know, Future Sight, right? So, attack in a, you know, obviously a number of turns. And uh, the idea of this set was to stall the opponent out and uh, hit them with a really hard Doom Desire. So on this set, we got max special attack and max speed. I did, I could have opted for a more bulky one, but I wanted my speed, and obviously I wanted my special attack for it to hit as hard as possible. And Jirachi is a fairly bulky Pokemon in general, even with like more of a sweeping set. So we got Doom Desire, Substitute, Protect, and Wish, Ability, Serene Grace, and Item, Steelium Z. Now the good thing about Steelium Z is you can use that on Doom Desire and it acts as just like a normal attack. So you don't have to wait those multitude of turns for Doom Desire to kick in. However, I like to keep that move under the hat after I used Doom Desire a couple of times. And then once the opponent sort of, you know, their guard was down a little bit, they thought, well, you know, I could swap my Pokemon outright and swap it in. I've got a couple of turns. You know, I've got a turn or so to Doom Desire actually goes off. Then you can hit him hard with the Z move and you get a, you know, you get a, a pretty pretty much a guaranteed KO if it is a neutral, I found most of the time. So Hone Edge is a, this is a problem here. I was trying to get the wishes up and some damage on this Hone Edge. Now Hone Edge is very bulky on the defensive side. On the special defensive side, it isn't really as bulky. So that's what I was trying to take advantage of. So it Shadow Sneak was super effective to me. I'm going to get another Doom Desire off here, which is nice too. So uh, Doom Desire has only got eight health as well. So I pretty much needed, I, I really needed Jirachi to uh, take a couple of Pokemon out. And then, you know, when it was useless, I just used it, right? I just went for the Wish and used it as fodder. That was pretty much this set. And it was, it was quite a fun set to run as well. So now we're going to go out of the Jirachi and now we're going to go into Smeagol because I know they're going to go for a Shadow Sneak again. That's also going to absorb that move because it's a normal type and it's not going to affect me. And now they're going to get hit by the Doom Desire's attack. So that was a nice predicting there taking out that, that Pokemon. So that was a problem Pokemon. So 
Look, when you're looking at this way, people, when you got problems like a hone edge, you, you, you've got problems, all right? So anyway, I had guys, I had to have nerves of steel to win this battle. So we got the Galade coming out. Obviously, I'm going to get destroyed by like uh, a karate chop. So I'm going to swap out uh, that and go into my Delmise. And we got the trick coming here. So like, okay, uh, in case it used a fighting type move, that's why I went into Delmise. So you guys can probably guess why I'm running Delmise. Delmise has Anchor Shot, which is a really unique, cool move. It's a steel trapping move, and it's really fun. So on this set, I've got Anchor Shot, Toxic Rest, and Sleep Talk. So going for the Toxic on the Glade, unfortunately, I could have gone for Anchor Shot there, but I thought it'd be more worthwhile going for uh, the Toxic, because that could be a problem Pokemon later on. And I can always swap out the Delmise after getting tricked that, uh, you know, that item up. So here, I've got to swap out. I've got a Choice Specs. It kind of sucks, but there really isn't much I could do. I might be able to make use of it later on in the game. So going to Jirachi, I'm just going to go for a Psychic, which I've seen before. I knew that I'd be able to take it on the Jirachi because of my typing. And uh, Glade Special Attack isn't the greatest in the world either. So it's got the leftovers. I thought, now this is prime time to actually use my Z-Move against uh, the Glade because uh, I've been hiding it the entire time. And I thought it'd be really good. So this is actually pretty powerful coming off Jirachi. Now the nature on Jirachi, I was running... I ran Timid. You could run Modus on it too if you wanted to for a little bit more extra base. But Jirachi looks pretty evil when it uses uh, its Z-Move as well. So going for the Corkscrew Crash Doom Desire. And uh, that one is going to be a lot of damage to the Glade. It's also poison as well, so I thought that would be, you know, definitely take it out in one shot. So that's down. That was really, really good. Now, the good thing about this is if I do outspeed another Pokemon afterwards, I can go for another Doom Desire, and that will hang around on the field even after I'm KO'd. So it's a really cool move. So I uh, go for Doom Desire on the Bastion. Obviously, I'm not going to do, you know, take it out in one shot. I was, I was kind of hoping I could use that move on Bastion instead of Glade, but I thought that would be you know, a better option. And it's going to go for the Earthquake to take out my Jirachi. That's cool. I'm fine with that. Jirachi, I, looking at my team, Bronzong and Jirachi are probably my best two Pokemon. Jirachi is a bit more of a gimmicky meme, so usually when I look at it as a whole, Bronzong was probably the most reliable Pokemon. So into my Clefable here, I'm going to go for a Switch here straight away, and now we're going to go into Delmise. So I thought, okay, they're going to go for an Iron Head. Let's go into Delmise. And, uh, you know, tank that one. And then uh, we got some more damage incoming from Jirachi's attack, right? So that, that was the plan anyway. So I thought I can go for an anchor shot here and get some more damage. Stone Edge actually misses, which is really nice. So getting some uh, extra damage off with the anchor shot. Anchor shot looks so cool. And uh, this is going to... Obviously, it's not going to be able to escape it, which is really nice. And the Bastion's going to take the Doom Desire damage. And that's going to take it out. So that's really good. Jirachi even doing some more damage after it was KO'd. That was... That was like, that's quite like, I like those attacks, they're really cool. I think they need to bring some more of those attacks into the next generation, like, you know, like Future Sight, Doom Desire, they're really cool. Okay, so we got Emboar, this one is a big counter, boys and girls, and uh, it only does a little bit of damage there. There's nothing I could have done. Uh, it's going to be a special set. Now, the only thing I was actually happy about was it was a special set, right? Um, I was kind of, I was low-key hoping it might be a Flare Blitz. If it was Flare Blitz, I could, you know, HP stall it out with the recoil damage, but that wasn't the case. So we're going to go into Clink here. Now, Clink really didn't get too much of a, you know, a go against his Emboar. It's going to outspeed it, and it's going to Fire Blast Clink into Oblivion. Man, I've only got two Pokemon left. I was actually hoping they'd run out of PP, maybe missing a Fire Blast here and there. If they were actually locked into it, I wasn't sure. So into Smeagol, um, the best I can do in this set is put the uh, Emboar to sleep. So on this Smeagol set, right, I'll actually explain my clink and stuff in the second battle. So I've got a lot of time in the second battle. So on this set, we have got as follows. We've got Belly Drum, Conversion, Spore, and Sun Steel Strike. So Sun Steel Strike is my Steel type attacking move. And uh, pretty much I can go for Belly Drum, get a plus six, use Conversion, turning myself into a Steel type, giving me a stab. And uh, so, you know, Sun Steel Trike hitting, uh, I guess, powerful. And I've got Spore to put the opponent asleep. I've got the item as Citrus Fairy and Nature as Jolly and Max Attack. Unfortunately for me, Emboar's going to wake up and take out my Smeagol. That was so unfortunate there. I could have got some good damage off against the Emboar. Not saying I definitely wouldn't have one-shot it, but I'd say I would have got some decent damage. My last Pokemon is the Clefable here. I can go for the Meteor Match, but it's pretty much over here unless the Emboar is actually, like, Choice Specs locked or something like that. Or if it misses... And uh, it doesn't, and that one is game. I hope you guys enjoyed this first battle. Let's get on to the second one. Now, as I said earlier on in the uh, video, this one was 111 turns. And boy, it was a really, really long battle. So let's get into it. Uh, this is a battle against Barlow. We have a Renuculus Leap. I'm leading things off with the Clefable again. I, I kind of like to put Clefable at the start. It's uh, pretty funny. So I'm going to go for Work Up this time. So on the Clefable set, I, yeah, I already measured how to Work Up and uh, Substitute. 
Um, I've got the work up, so I thought I might as well get some, you know, speed, like, uh, not speed boost. So I'm thinking of my Salic Berry, my work up boost uh, against uh, this Pokemon, and uh, see if I can hit it with a Meteor Mash. So it's going to be Silo. Now, Silo is a really interesting move. It actually does a random base power uh, damage, like a random roll damage. Also, it doesn't hit you for, like, a Psychic type move either, but there are, like, there are, like, little things, like, you can't use Side Wave against, like, a Dark-type Pokemon, kind of, or it doesn't affect a Dark-type Pokemon. So, it's like, it's, like, a really unique, cool move. Anyway, so, go for Meteor Magic. I was pretty happy with that damage. Like, low-key like, like, low admit, I was pretty happy. So, one more uh, is going to take me out. I've got the Salic Berry here. There's really nothing the Fable can do. This is a terrible, horrible set, which is, why I, <laughs> which is pretty much why I chose it. And uh, Renuku is going to get some damage, and I'm going to... I might be able to put it away with one of my Pokemon later on in the battle. So I uh, don't miss with Meteor Mash, and uh, do some pretty good damage. I was happy with that. Now we've got a Trick Room coming up from Nucleus. So I was like, okay, that's not too bad. I might be able to make use of that with my Bronze on, right? Because if you remember, that was a brave nature. I might be able to, you know, slide that one in and take a couple of Pokemon up. So Renuku is going to outspeed me under the Trick Room and take me out with the Psy Wave. But that was cool. The Fable did all right, did some damage trip. Now, I'm not sure if this Pokemon actually has Recover on it. That was the only thing I was kind of worried about. Um, or Regenerate. That, that, was, that was the annoying thing. So I was guessing probably more Recover over Regenerate. So into my boy Bronzong, I can uh, I can go for like a Gyro Ball, a Heavy Slam, a Iron, you know, Iron Head, any of those moves. And uh, now we've got the Luxray coming in. So Luxray is actually going to get the Intimidate up against... <sighs> against my Bronzong. Man, there was always like... As I was thinking like all the battles I did today, there was Electric types, you know... Um, they really, really wore me. Water types, steel types, and fire types would sweep me, right? That, it was actually really hard that this was, like, really, really difficult just attacking with steel type moves. But that's sort of, like, the challenge of these teams, right? Okay, so we got, uh, this is such a good counter, too. So we got a Fire Fang Luxray. So not only can it tank all of my steel type moves, right, it can hit me with a super effective Fire Fang. Uh, this still is quite a bulky set. I actually didn't go over the EVs for this one. It's quite interesting. So we got on this one, <clears throat> Max health, max special defense, and we got yeah, impish nature. So I gave myself a little bit more bulk with the nature and defense, and the rest in special defense. So I've got anchor shot, toxic, rest, sleep talker. So it's uh, it's not a bad stalling. It's kind of like the stalling set on my team. So we got the toxic on the luck trade. There really wasn't much I could do. I had to get that on there just for some damage. I thought it'd be better than going for anchor shot as well. It might help me more over time. So we got another fire fang, and that's going to take up my delmise. Man, I've I've got to get rid of this like asap. It's a big big threat. So we got some more Toxic up against the Lux right here. We've got to take it out. So we're going to go into Jirachi. Now, Jirachi is reasonably bulky in its defenses and stuff, even with a sweeping set. So I thought, let's go for Doom Designer. Let's get that one up. I'll be able to tank, like, you know, whatever moves it throws me. I've still got some, like, protect and stuff. However, it's going to go for a Roar instead. I was like, okay, that actually was fairly good because that's going to get rid of my Jirachi. I'm not going to take any damage. And Bronzong pops in, so I'm like... Not bad, not bad, because I've got the Ocker Berry as the item, so if it goes for Fire Fang, it's going to activate, right? So now we've got the Fire Fang, I'm going to eat my Ocker Berry before it lands, and uh, that's going to do some nice damage, not to my Bronzong. I tanked that so well! So we're going to go for the Trick Room here. Now, it would have been amazing, right? I could have run Heat Proof and Heat Proof and Ocker Berry. That would have been like a mega trolley for this team. I probably could have, I probably should have done that for the memes, but I thought, uh, you know, Ocker Berry was enough. So now going for the Gyro Ball against the Luxray, it really does very disappointing damage. There's not much I could do. It's 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 such a great counter to my team. So we got another Fire Fang there. It's about a... I'd say it's about a four hit KO. And now finally Luxray gets hit by the Doomsday and that takes it out. Boy, I'm glad to get rid of that Pokemon. That was like a, that was like a really, really good counter to my team. Not only did I have Intimidate to drop all my physical steel type moves, it was the right typing. Speaking of which, we got another really, really good typing. So Electric and Ward is such good typing against me. So I'm going to go for Iron Hand. Hopefully I can get some like... Iron Head flinches. Hydro Pump. So it's got to be more of an offensive one. That Hydro Pump hits pretty hard, taking out my Bronze. Oh, man. This is this is another really, like, problem po This This team had so many problem Pokemon in it for me. So now we're going to go into Jirachi. I don't have much to do against this thing. The only thing I can really do is go for the Doom Desire. It actually adds speed to me. I was like, damn, speedy lantern, boys. And uh, I'm going to go for the Doom Desire. So obviously, it was a choice scarf set to outspeed Jirachi. And uh, now we've got another Hydro Pump. I'm actually quite glad the first one missed. So Hydro Pump doing pretty good damage against Jirachi. It's a solid three hit KO. Now I'm going to go for my Z move here. I can't afford to like hold back against this Pokemon. 
Um, it's it's such a great counter to my team. So we got the Z move. Also, the great thing about using the Z move, right, is you can use the Z move, get that you know straightaway damage, and then you've already got that Doomsday coming in afterwards. So you're almost getting like some if you time it right, you get like double damage on one turn. It's actually pretty cool. So hitting that lantern, that right there was a critical hit. That was so bad. Anyway, so the Twisted Dimension turned it off. So I, my apologies, the Twisted Dimension were up. It wasn't a Choice Scarf Lantern. It was, uh, you know, outspeeding me under Trick Group. So now we've got the Cosmog coming in here. And Cosmog is unfortunately going to be able to take that Doom Desire. And uh, the Lantern is going to come out unscathed. Man, that sucks. I really wanted that damage against the Lantern. So down goes Cosmog. I mean... That, that, that sucked. Anyway, so not, not that it would have done a lot of damage. Puku, Puku, another counter. Like, seriously, guys, this was enough to do my head in. So going for the Doomsday on the Puku, Puku. Now, Puku, Puku is going to go for the block here. So, like, okay. Now, one thing against Puku, Puku, right, it heavily relies on status type moves. And guess what move I've got on the set, which is Substitute. So I throw up the Substitute, right, which is nice. It can't use Soak. And I know that they, I know damn well that it's got Toxic. So it's got Block. Soak and Toxic, right? And it's probably got Counter as its other move or Recover. So I'm guessing it probably has Recover. I was low-key hoping it didn't, but I kind of knew it did. So anyway, beyond the substitute, I'm going to go for the Wish here. So Runicus is going to come in. Now, looking at this team, right, there's a Lantern, big Counter, Puki Muki, which is a big Counter as well. So I've got my uh, I've got my Jirachi. It's going to go for the Doom Desire on the Runicus, and it actually takes it out. So that's really, really good. I've also got a, I've got a critical hit there, which actually was you know, really, really nice. I'd say I would have been able to get around the Runicus anyway. If it had recovered, that could have been problems. That's the only thing that probably would have you know, annoyed me. So we got the Lantern here. At least I've got, you know, guys, at least I've got the sub up, right? So go for Doom Desire on the Lantern again. Man, this this was so rough. This was so rough. Now we've got the Discharge on the Lantern. Now, Lantern obviously is not going to go for the Hydro Pump. Um, it wants to get rid of my substitute right away. It doesn't want to miss with that, you know, like Hydro Pump or anything along those lines. So getting some uh, more health back with a Wish. I know that I can tank Discharge all day. The only annoying thing would be if I got, like, um, paralyzed. I accidentally missed I wanted to go for a protect. Oh, it's so frustrating. Like, at this point in the game, like, I'd done so many battles already. I was, like, so... I was, like, I was kind of, like, getting sick of this team. So, we're going to throw up another Wish there uh, from the Jirachi. Now, Lantern's going to go for another Discharge. Unfortunately, this time, I get paralyzed, which sucks so much. Um, I had to get up that... Uh, I had to really get up that uh, wish as well. So Lantern is going to uh, get hit by the Doom Zara again, only doing a little bit of damage to it. And Jirachi is going to get paralyzed here because I actually tried to go for... I think I went for another Doom Zara, I think. So we got the Discharge, and that's going to take out my Jirachi. Man, that sucks. So I've got two remaining Pokemon left, right? I've got Smeagol. Now, Smeagol is sort of my last shining hope here to actually get back into this game. I've got Puku Muku and Lantern to actually deal with. So firstly, like 101 here was to put the Lantern to sleep. We've got to put the Lantern to sleep. Now, if Lantern wants to choose to stay in against this, I'm going to set up Belly Drum, and then I'm going to go for the Sun Steel Strike. And, uh, you know, I I'm quite confident I'll be able to take it out in about... At plus six, I reckon about two to three of them will take it out. Even at plus six, it's like so, resist it so much. And Smeagol's attack is basically garbage. So anyway, we're going to eat that Citrus Spray, which is nice there. So the good thing about this is, well, I can convert myself into a Steel type Pokemon. So uh, if any like, you know, if any like Poison type like that, Puka I was already thinking I might be able to get around its Soak and its uh, Toxic with Conversion Up. Anyway, so Lantern is going to swap out there, and we got Puka Muka coming in. Now, the problem about this was, is Puki Muki is going to really be able to storm me out hard here. So, go for Sun Steel Strike, which looks absolutely incredible on Smeagol. And it does nothing to Puki Muku. So, now, going for the conversion here, converting myself into a Steel-type Pokemon. I smelt that Toxic from a mile away. And it's going to go for Toxic, and it's not going to affect me because I'm a Steel-type. Now, I'm actually thinking here... Puki Muki really can't do much to me, right? If it has recover, it's got really no way to hit me at all. Now back into the land here, go for the Sun Steel Strike again. Now this time I actually got my con I converted myself into a Steel type, so I do a little bit more damage. It's pretty good, but the next move is going to take out the Lantern. And boy, man, I, I'm, I'm overcoming some more counters here, people. This is actually like a solid video to show you guys, like, like sort of like the counters I was coming up against. So Lantern is finally going to go down, and we got the Puki Muki and one other left. So we got the Type Null here, or Type Scum. So this one, if it was an Everlight set, I, ha I had to take it out right away. So not playing any games at all. I could have gone for the Spore, but if it woke up, it could have taken me out. I've got to get the damage up. Why? You know why? I got to I got to strike the battle while the iron top people I had to say that one. So we got the uh, Type Null going for the work up there, and it does. A, my attack actually does a little bit under half. It's going to get a plus one in attack and special attack. So I was like, okay, well I can go for Sun Steel Strike here, take it down to like one health, plug my own merch, and then like you know take it out with another Pokemon. 
However, the first one was actually a low damage roll, and the second one was a higher damage roll, and that took out the type scum. So, people, this bit I had to speed up a lot because this was the Puki Muki bit. So, this bit was actually sped up uh, by 10 times. This bit took up 75 turns. So, we're going to play some music for a little bit, people, because there's no way I'm going to be able to actually narrate this. Just pretend this last bit didn't happen, all right, guys? It's This is all a figment of your imagination, all right? Okay. I never want to see a Puku Muku in my entire life ever again.